So hi, I'm Teresa. I'm a UX lead within the PX team. Um, and this past sprint, I've been uh, been part of this project, which is you've seen from Matt previously. So it's part of the AI subsystem project. So the first use case and the first action, um, which we're hoping to make available through this AI subsystem, um, is AI summarization. So you would have seen some prototypes of this before. Um, what we wanted to do is just kind of take back a step uh, and to do a little bit more uh, discovery around how this process might work and how we can best make it fit into students' um, experience. So what you can see here is an extremely high level diagram. It's not the same as the one as the AI subsystem, which has a lot of components to it. Um, but this is how I imagine the student experience to go. They open up some content, it looks long. They want a shorter version. They somehow trigger a summary of that content. They view the summary and then they might have some actions off the back of that. Um, so in order to deliver a, a, a great student experience um, based on uh, this sort of high level uh, experience I've mapped out here, uh, we went through a few, a, a bunch of different steps. And I say we, because there really were quite a few people involved. Um, Robbie, of course, and the platform team um, and quite a few of the platform team have been uh, giving me feedback as we go, as well as um, Winnie and a few others on the PX team um, and Zoe as well on this. So we went through um, some ideation, uh, which was just at a very low fidelity, um, presenting wireframes at UX Huddle, which I'll show in a little bit to get some feedback from the uh, broader UX team, uh, creating simple interactive prototypes, which we were able to use in user testing to do some concept testing with. And um, we did some moderated user testing and then some analysis on that. So um, I was actually presenting designs to people and they were able to interact with it and give their feedback. Uh, and then we've now iterated on the design um, for displaying that summary and how that trigger works at a high fidelity. So that's ready um, to go. So on to this next little bit. This is quite zoomed out, but in case you haven't um, heard of the UX huddles, this is something that we do together as the UX team. Um, we kind of each bring in work that uh, we've been working on. It can be work in progress. And it's just a really great way to get um, feedback from a whole bunch of people at once um, and people with a broad range of experiences across Moodle. So um, this was really valuable to kind of get that feedback and thoughts um, based on what would and wouldn't work with the way that um, that Moodle is used. So the reason we started with lo-fi concepts is just that they're great for uh, exploring ideas without spending too much time on them um, and without getting bogged down to or too attached to any particular detail. Um, as I said, the UX huddle, um, we did the, the three uh, between Robbie and I, we did uh, three different concepts, which we brought to the UX huddle and the feedback there helped us narrow down to two concepts to progress with uh, for concept testing. And with those concepts, we tested them with uh, students to be able to find out what worked best for them. So here I have animated GIFs, but they're not cute memes, <laughs> just <laughs> prototypes. Um, but these are the two concepts that we tested. So there was one version where it appears on the side, um, but kind of overlapping the original concept, that is concept A. And then we had another version where it actually pushes down the original content and places the summary over the top of them. Um, so Winnie was a really big support for uh, setting up these uh, moderated interviews and helping me perform them, as well as Robbie. Um, and in the concept testing, uh, both concepts had pretty positive feedback that this would be a, a valuable feature for them as part of uh, their workflow in studying. Um, we asked their preference and most of them had only a slight preference for one or the other. Um, the initial prototype that we had had two different calls to actions. You might be able to see it's quite small here, but there's a button that says summarize, which is being clicked in this prototype and they're in the same position. Originally, we had them in two different positions. One didn't have a label um, and uh, one of them did. So we ended up changing that because most of the feedback that we got with a preference for concept B initially was that they liked the button to have the word summary on it and be next to the content. Um, so based on that and the fact that the opinions were kind of split, um, once we made that change to the concept, it swung the opposite direction 
and there was a preference for concept A, um, but there was strong feedback that people wanted to be able to view both the summary and the original content side by side, not overlapping. Um, which brought us to our list of recommendations based off um, of the research and the prototyping that we did, which is to position the summary on the side of the original text. Um, this is a side draw. It is not the block draw, although it looks very similar, um, which is something we'll explore a bit more deeply in the next sprint. Um, but it's positioned on the side of the original text. It's overlapping so we can reference both. Um, we have options to uh, regenerate and copy. These were the ones which were most commonly cited by people in the testing um, and to position the call to action close to the content and uh, be labeled something which is um, makes sense for this. Um, uh, just a note that in this uh, these prototypes, we haven't gone through any uh, content design at this point. So if you have any recommendations on microcopy, we're not quite there yet, but we'll get there quite soon. Uh, and if you're interested in taking a look, there is a link to that Figma prototype, which has a little bit more detail, not a lot, but a little bit more detail in terms of how it might interact with the block draw. So this is going to get into a little bit more detail uh, in that next sprint, as well as looking at unhappy paths, different states, um, and uh, ticking off a policy agreement before you actually start interacting with AI within Moodle. So hopefully this is the first of um, many different AI actions which will be available as we go. And yes, there are a lot of drawers. <laughs> okay, uh, that's all for me.